We have Jesse Marsh and Dennis Hamlet. Uh, we're going to forego opening statements and just open it up to questions. We do have a mic that will be passed around. Just ask you to wait for the mic. <clears throat> Take questions. Start with Mark. Hi, guys. Uh, Jesse, this is uh, the end of your third year uh, here with the team. Um, in each case, you guys uh, ended short of the, the goal. Where does this season fit among the three that you have been here? What, how would you describe it? Yeah, I think um, for me, this season was probably the most challenging. Um, you know, we, we had uh, less established players, more new guys and young players in the system. Um, you know, we had to go through a lot of different challenges in the year in terms of results and then changing a formation and, um, you know, dealing with an Open Cup run. And But in all those ways, I think they actually helped us uh, grow the most. So I feel like even when I look at the playoffs, that if we had six halves of playoff football this year, I feel like in five of them we performed great with, you know, the one – uh, Toronto first half at home, we were a little hesitant, but even then we walked out 1-1. But, you know, I mean, one of the things that we've had struggles with in, the, in my time frame here has been in the playoffs really now playing the way we want to play and really in a brave and courageous manner going after the games in, in the way that we want to. And I think that this year was markedly different markedly different in terms of now the the understanding of what we wanted to be come big games and you know you could even go back to the open cup run and technically we're six and one in elimination games so when we had our back and a lot of those were on the road so when we ever we had our backs against the wall this team really responded and, and that was I think the the toughest part about saying goodbye to this team is in that sense uh you feel like there was a lot more to give yet from everybody. The tanks were full. Guys were ready to keep pushing. It's not the kind of year where there's fru like we're, we're left with frustration. So um, I, for me, that means that, that we've learned a lot, we've grown a lot, and we have a lot to build on to move forward. So um, from a points perspective and everything else, it, it, it may not look as successful. But for me, this is our most successful season. I was just going to add that does that why today's a tough day because it looked like this team was playing its best yeah. at the end. Yeah. No, it does make it tough. It does make it tough. And even, you know, I mean, obviously we all know the rules on away goals, but, you know, I mean, to, to go up against one of the best teams in league history and finish 2-2 and win at their place and shut them out, limit them in, in almost every way, it's it's tough, right? It, you felt you felt like this group was was really ready. So, but that's the reality of what we do. Um, saying goodbye is never easy because, you know, around here I think we've been really lucky to have great young men on this team, uh, great people within the organization that truly care about the right things and care about working together, which makes it so much fun, and it gives us a real chance at 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 not just being unique, but really really doing something special. So, and I think that's the disappointment that comes is, is everybody, whether it was, you know, losing in the Open Cup final or coming up a little bit short again in the playoffs is everybody that's around here senses that there's something really special happening here. And, and the only way to really crown it is to put trophies on top of it. And so everybody's working tirelessly to, to do that. And even as we sit here right now, the discussions are how to build this thing to be even better for next year, how to use our resources, how to challenge guys in the off season to make sure that they come back really ready for the Champions League ch challenges. Um, so uh, the, the clock never stops, right? It never, uh, you never really get rest, but um, it's, a, it's a labor of love, I think, for everybody here. Go to Christian in the back and then Joe. Dennis, I think you might have a unique perspective on this as a former head coach, former assistant coach, but everything Jesse had to do with the youth movement, uh, the juggling some of the key injuries to some of your star players, um, can you just kind of assess the challenges from 2017 and will he be the man leading this team in 2018? Yes, he will be. Uh, look, I think it's been uh, a challenging year, like Jesse mentioned, but I think that uh, Jesse and his staff, uh, they've worked tremendously hard in terms of 
sticking to who we are and what we are. Uh, and so you can see that uh, it's pretty evident when we step on the field in terms of how we play. Uh, so from, from my standpoint, uh, you know, when we look at the, the first team and you look all the way down into our second team in our academy, it's we're creating something that's different and something that's unique uh, to this league. And so we're making sure that we want to stay true to that and then continue to develop that. Uh, it's a challenge, but like you mentioned, look, in, in the playoffs, uh, what we were able to do, uh, we came up short at the end of the day. Uh, but our guys left it on the field. And, and so for me, from my standpoint, is like that's all we can ask from our guys when they step on the field is to make sure they compete, uh, be brave, and, and take, the, take the game to the opponent. And, and we did that in the two-game series, and we came, up, we came up short. So it's part of it. You know, one team moves on, and we have to make sure now that we think about how we can regroup and bring the right uh, type of players, reinforcements in, so make sure now that we can get over the hump for next season. Jesse, uh, in your time here, the team has been skewing younger every year. Obviously, some of the core players and most important players are over 30 players. Uh, it, does that put a little pressure on them in terms of um, their, maybe their vulnerability in the offseason? And is it fair to say the team's going to look very different next season? You know, it, it, when I first came here, I challenged all the veteran players to understand that we were going to be about developing young players. With the idea that eventually, if you do that, that you probably means that they're going to take your job at some point, which is such a harsh reality of, of how this business works. But the, the way that everybody has embraced being part of this has just amazed me. And guys like Sasha Kleschen, Bradley Wright Phillips, Luis Robles, Damian Parnell, the way that they've committed to their leadership and to their selflessness, it's, it's a big part of what's made us good. And so I can't thank those guys enough. Um, you know, we, we still value all of them in big ways. And so, you know, we'll, we'll, we're evaluating what that means for everybody moving forward. It's certainly not just because you get old that it's time for you to go away. I mean, every, they, they still have so much to contribute. And we just have to now do a good job of evaluating um, what the options are moving forward. And it's the toughest part of doing this. Um, I mean, I, I can say I've truly become close with all of them. Um, and so any time that you say goodbye, it's like saying goodbye to a close friend or to a son or, you know, so, so we don't take any decisions that we make in the off season lightly. We know how much they, they mean to their families, how much they mean to, to what we do here, um, to the relationships. So um, there's nothing to report right now and there's nothing concrete. Uh, we'll evaluate everything and, and certainly, you know, you have to know that, that we appreciate them. Now on the young, uh, let's talk about the young movement because, you know, I think that this has been unique to, to our league is what's happening here. I think our investment in young players, the numbers for homegrown minutes this year were outrageous, the highest ever. Um, you know, and, and when you see the other teams that play homegrown, they, they're not as successful. So I think not only do we have good homegrown players, but we develop them, we challenge them to be a big part of what we do, we invest in them, and, and they help us be successful. So, you know, I think that it's really a, a, an incredible model for what this sport needs to be in this country. And if we had more clubs that really, truly, every club says they believe in young players, but not all of them truly now uh, invest in them the right ways, the way that we do. So, you know, it's, it's our philosophy, it's what we believe in, but, but it's also with a broad, a broad perspective in mind. And, you know, to see a guy like Tyler Adams develop so well this year and become such a big player, the pride that I think our club has that he's in the national team camp, uh, as much as, you know, we kind of knew that I told him that he was going to go into camp if we lost, but I said, so that means you're not going into your first camp. Um, but, you know, Tyler has a way of just, uh, uh, he's grown so much, he's so committed, he works his butt off every day. I mean, he, you know, not everybody knows this, but he's uh, taking classes through Southern New Hampshire University, and, and so he's committed to continuing to educate himself and grow as a person as much as he has as a player. And, and, and I could go through and tell you how Sean Davis does all the same things, Alex Mule does all the same things, and I could go down all of our young players and tell them that, that they feel a responsibility and they also commit to this all the way. Uh, you know, so I think there's a real sense of pride in terms of what we do here, in terms of how holistically we try to challenge people to, to get better, but we have a, a philosophy, we have an identity, and that everybody's truly committed to it. Matt Harmon in the back, and then Jason. Dennis, going into the offseason, um, which has already started, obviously, how 
quick for you do you start to look at other rosters now as other teams in Major League Soccer announce players that they're not renewing or start to evaluate outside areas like Central America, South America, Europe, um, the process? Yeah, I mean, it's it's an ongoing process. You know, I think, uh, you know, now that we've had Ben, a head scout on board, uh, it's something we've been evaluating uh, since he's gotten here. And so, obviously, now we get really ramped up in terms of looking and, and, and trying to see if we can get uh, a right piece that, you know, player that plays in MLS that uh, we feel like can come in and fit into our system. So uh, it's an ongoing process. You know, that's something that we want to make sure that we build out the right way so we do have options that we can choose uh, when we decide we need a player. Jason up the side, and then we'll go to Jack Talk. Yeah, uh, Jesse, you sort of already answered my question about, uh, I was going to ask about the sense of pride that the organization has with a guy like Tyler Adams. Um, but if you could get a little more specific, like what are the strides that you think he made that enabled him to make that jump to being called into the major camp for um, a match against Portugal? It's been it's been a little bit of a crescendo, right? Like so, we saw when I, when I first came here, and Dennis and I can can refer back to this, but one of the first days on the job, we went we were in preseason camp and we went down to Bradenton, Florida, to watch the U17s play, and Tyler was the youngest player in that group. And right away, we both like lit up because we could see um, all of his qualities. And then, you know, once we started to talk to him and then start to put him into our system, so, you know, I mean, then we put him into the USL and then he became more established within the USL team, helped that team win a championship. Then we, you know, made some moves to make room for him to develop more this year and to see him go from day one this year to where he is now. And then, you know, play the way he played in the playoffs and play the way he did at the end of the year and then ultimately lead to, uh, to him getting called into the national team. You know, the biggest challenge with Tyler has been trying to figure out, are we taking are we are we too cautious with his development path because each challenge that we gave him you know you could go back to that Chelsea game right and he was one of the best players on the field in the Chelsea game and so on, after that day I'm, I'm sitting there asking myself well I know he's only 16 but you know he basically beat Chelsea do we do we want to give him more but we also wanted to just make sure that we you know it's always you always just are trying to create a development path for the team and for each individual players that's going to allow them to flourish to the best of their ability. Um, so yeah, now when you see him grow here, I, and I think a big piece for him has been not just the, the it's, it's everything. It's the, the understanding of what the work day is about, the understanding of what the mentality is about, the understanding of how we play, the understanding of how to commit to himself, but also to everyone around him. And he's unique. It doesn't take many reminders. You give him one little comment, and, and he takes it and runs with it and processes it in all the right ways. So, you know, we'll, I think all of us in this club will be looking toward that Portugal game, hoping he starts. I'm not sure if he will, but then watch him when he gets on the field and, and excited for, for his next step. You know, the two things I would add to that is, you know, when, when you look at him, is just he plays the game with such brave uh, and, and is such a competitor, and I think those are the two things that you know we saw when he was 16, down in the, the U17 camp, and uh, that stood out for me. And, and you kind of just seen that how he steps on the field, he has a, such a strong belief in who he is, and so I think those are two qualities that you know are very important. Jesse, you, you talked about the investment in young players, and it's certainly significant. But when you look at a guy like like Tyler, um, now he's going to the national team. He'll be seen in Europe. Certainly, people are aware of him. How do you, or can you hold back? <laughs> um, I mean, look, I, I'm sure you're not going to answer. How long is he under contract? Is it is it one more year? Um, what do you see as as the future for for him? And and really, what's the organization's philosophy? You're going. You're certainly developing young players. You're giving them a chance to play. At some point, they're going to want to pursue other opportunities yeah no uh, you know he, he is under contract um uh we don't need to get into the details of how long but you know he, he he's here uh and then um that will be you know it, you're right it will be uh challenging to analyze exactly now how to manage what's what are the next steps for him Okay, but what, a, what an incredible challenge for him and for us, uh, how fortunate we are to, to have him here while we have him. I think, you know, 
on, on one level, we fully understand that keeping him here is, is a good thing for him and for us. And on another level, I think we have to understand that um, we have to look at every opportunity that's presented to, for both the club and for Tyler to think about, you know, what the future looks like. I think we can all sit here and probably agree to the fact that he's not going to be here for his whole career. Um, and then it, it'll just be a matter of trying to, together with Tyler and his family, uh, and, and I'll say this, his family is fantastic. Um, he has a younger brother in the academy as well. He has an older brother who's a football player at Marist. Um, you know, they, they've, they've committed to this club in such a big way and driving an hour and a half each direction to come to the academy with both sons. Uh, so, you know, together with his family, trying to figure out what are the next steps and what's best for Tyler's overall development. Um, you know, it, it, it's similar, to, uh, you know, if you, if you talk to Tyler, I think he'd say all the right things, but he's ambitious. There's no question. He's an ambitious kid, and he should be. So, uh, yeah, it won't be an easy offseason to figure out what the next steps are, but, but we'll do it in a way that we think honors Tyler and his family and our club. Mark in the second round. Guys, I want to go back <clears throat> to the match in Toronto for a minute. Um, obviously, we have, we've seen some video of uh, absolute insanity going on in the tunnel. Um, do you anticipate any fines or, I don't know if suspensions is the right word, but do you anticipate disciplinary action from the league? Uh, for me, I think there's no need for us to engage in, in, in all the debate that's going on. I think uh, from the standpoint of the, that series, you know, we felt uh, we went out, we played. You know, you take the four halves, like just mentioned in, in that series. Uh, you know, we had one bad half, but we took the game to them. We were brave. We played our game. We were competitive. And at the end of the day, you know, we came up short. Um, so, you know, it's 2-2, two -two, away goals. They, they move on. So congrats to them on that end. Uh, look, the league is doing an investigation, and we'll leave it at that point for them to decide. Pardeep, and then we'll go to Christian. Um, back to Tyler, you have been playing him a lot at right wing back this season, but last game you played him at center mid. If he sticks around, is that the plan going forward? I think in the end his best position is in the middle of the field, right? It just the way that it worked with our team this year, he was able to be really effective out there. Um, and I've said this before, I mean, I, I, could, I, I literally could envision him playing in any of the 10 spots. Other, maybe not goalie. So, so yeah, but I, I do think in the end his best position will be middle of the field as a midfielder. In which case does right back become a priority as you look for as you look to bolster the squad in the offseason? Yeah, season? I mean we have some right back options like Murillo, Lade, Zizzo within the within the current um, roster. Um, I think we will look to bolster our back line, you know, for sure. Um, so that that will be something in general that we'll be looking to add to. Uh, and Dennis maybe can speak more about uh, other positions, but um, you know, focusing on Tyler, I, you know, I mean, he he he's effective in all all those spots, but I think best spot is in the middle of the field. A lot of MLS teams are making changes with their USL structures and affiliations. How committed is this organization to continuing Red Bulls to next year? Uh, I'm assuming it would be at Montclair. Uh, and then part two, one of the players that's come up through the USL, Aaron Long, had a real standout season for you guys. Is he somebody who you could see maybe being a part of the national team at some point if he continues on with the trajectory? And I'll let the two of you fight it out. I'll, I'll take the Aaron Long and you can take – I'll start with Aaron. You know, if it weren't for Tyler, I think Aaron Long would be the big talking point of our team this year um, because Aaron, I think, you know, went from a great year in USL last year and then, you know, started out strong but only got stronger as the year went on. And to watch him in this last game shut down Giovinco almost, almost entirely was phenomenal. So uh, we challenged Aaron a lot to develop in terms of leadership, in terms of communication, in terms of presence, in terms of understanding, in ter you know, in all those ways he's responded. And so, you know, his, he's older than Tyler and, and, and his development path has taken a little bit different course, but I think that the future for Aaron is incredibly bright, incredibly bright, and he is, a, he is no doubt a foundation of what we're building for the future. Yes, regard to, yeah, we are 100% committed to uh, to Red Bull 2, and uh, we'll be playing at Montclair State. Uh, you know, the important part for us is, is, you know, we do use Red Bull 2 as a development plan for our players to, to gain the experience, um, to understand the system, how to play. And, you know, I think John Molniak and Ibra and Vadim have done an amazing job in terms of uh, putting the players through the system. And so, so when they do come to the first team, it, it's an easy transition for them. And I think... Uh, 
you've been able to see that with, like Jesse mentioned, with Tyler, Baron Long, you can, Derek, Derek Etienne. Uh, you know, this year we brought up Vince, uh, and so some other guys have done well that hopefully, you know, we'll be having discussion in terms of bringing them to preseason. So it's an important part for us in terms of uh, what we're creating because we do put a big emphasis on our, our Red Bull too. And let me, I'll, I'll also say that Red Bull invests a lot in that team. And, I, you know, that's why teams, you see them departing from the USL structure because it's expensive. But, you know, this club is so committed to youth development and to trying to find the right avenues for, the, for players to be successful that they're not giving up on that team. We're, we're, that's a foundation of what we do. And I'll say I hope the fans appreciate it because I, I do. I love it. I'm, a, I'm like the biggest fan of the USL team. I love watching them every week. I think, like, like Dennis said, John's done an amazing job with that team and his staff, and, and they're with us every day in the way that we work to try to really challenge all these players to get to be the best that they can possibly be within our system, I think is really unique, really unique in our country. So um, I hope that there's a true appreciation out there from our fans for, for what that means. Coach, back middle. I don't want to get away from the youth movement, but I was wondering if you guys can talk about a couple of veterans, uh, like uh, Varone, Grella, uh, Colin, and um, um, you know, those guys. It's just what, what you see from them. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, it was unfortunate with, with Mike and Aurelian this year, and to think that, you know, without those two guys, we were still able to, to be so successful is, I think, a testament to our overall group. Um, Mike actually had a baby boy today. Uh, so son Mateo. So uh, uh, congratulations to him and his wife, Jessica. Uh, and, you know, we're seeing positive uh, recovery from him in his surgery. So we're really hopeful that moving forward that we can get him back. Uh, Aurelian's uh, story this year was very strange and took many twists and turns. Um, he has been now, uh, he's going over to France full time to, to Champlain to to go through the, the re recovery and rehab there on his plantar fasciitis. So, and we're very hopeful that he can get back to full health come preseason. Um, so, you know, from those guys, that's, that's, the, that's the focus right now is just getting them physically back and getting them back on the field so that they can, you know, two quality players that we think can help us. And then, you know, with Gonzalo, I think this was his best year. You know, and I think he stayed healthy. I think he he committed to his role within the team. He committed to trying to continue to adapt. Uh, and now moving forward, we just have to think about, you know, what the possibilities are. And, and, you know, like I was saying before, we've got to tilt everything now to the individual and trying to figure out how to how to honor, you know, their personal desires and then the club desires and, and see how we can make them meet and see how we move forward together. So I don't know if you want to expand on that at all, but but I will say that from a from a playing perspective, I, I, I think this was Gonzalo's best year. I agree. I mean, I think you, you covered it pretty well. Back to Jack. We have time for a yeah. couple more guys. Jesse, to, to ask you, uh, <coughs> Yeah. Um, well, the first thing, I just uh, made plane tickets for the Bahamas next week, so I'll be gone for about five days. And I'm keeping his phone. <laughs> um, so, you know, a, a big part of what we do here is challenging everybody to, to grow, to be better to, as people, as players. And, and this is part of my personal path, development path. Um, you know, I appreciate that some people have talked about me, uh, you know, in the U.S. men's national team picture. Um, but it, truly, I'm not focused on any of that. I'm focused on doing the best job I can for this club. And that includes trying to now get the best version of myself and continue to figure out ways to get better and learn and grow. Uh, I'm very thankful for, for my relationship with the people at, at – uh, Red Bull headquarters like Ralph Rangnick and Oliver Minsloff and Helmut Gross and Wolfgang Geiger. I mean, I could go down the list. And, and certainly even the times that I've spent in Salzburg and in Leipzig and the, and the way that people have treated me there and, and how much I've learned from them, I think, has been invaluable for me. So the, and the UEFA license, the U.S. course, this is all part of it. So I understand in theory that 
by spreading my time out at certain moments, it means that I'm not able to commit myself fully to the moment of being here at New York Red Bulls. But for me to be the best version of myself at New York Red Bulls, I think it's key for me to continue to challenge myself to grow and get better. So this is, this is what I'm committed to. And fortunately, I have a club that's even more committed to, to doing that for me and with me than, I, than maybe I am myself. So uh, I'm lucky to be here. This has been a renaissance uh, period in my life. Um, my family's life, being part of this club, has been uh, um, more rewarding than I could ever ask. And, and uh, you know, I'm going to continue to try to repay them by, by the work that gets done. I'll spend time in Leipzig a little bit this winter. Uh, I have to continue with both my courses. My, my US course will wrap up December 16th. My UEFA course doesn't wrap up until next summer, or actually next fall. Uh, so yeah, it's kind of daunting, actually, thinking about all the work I have to do. Yeah, that's for UEFA Pro. They're in the US Soccer Pro, so. Time for two more if we have them, guys. Mark Purdy. <coughs> Jesse, uh, at the start of any season the, the, in MLS, the team's goal is to come home with the MLS Cup. Um, that didn't happen this year. Does that make 2017 a successful year or a failure? It, for me, this is a successful year, no question. Um, and, and a big piece of it is watching the growth from day one to, to day whatever. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I it's, I'm, I'm, a com incredibly competitive person and and it eats at you when you don't get what you want but i think it's also really important to have a broad perspective that truly winning and losing isn't the whole story it's not and i know i'm judged by wins and losses and that's going to be how i will always be judged but that's not how i how i teach or coach or or live and so I'm a firm believer that we will get there. And I know it's painful for our fans. It's painful for all of us. And being part of I underestimated when I came here with this club how difficult it would be to get this thing to where we want it to go. But we are going to get there. I have no doubt, and I'm more encouraged now than I've ever been. So, um, yeah, uh, it's a success, no question for me. After the match in Toronto this week, you said that you've learned more about yourself this year than you have in years past. What exactly did you learn about yourself? Well, you know, this group has required more introspective thinking and more uh, questioning and looking at things carefully. And that's everything from a tactical perspective to a, a teaching perspective to a mentoring and leadership perspective, communication. Uh, just trying to, to again, hone, uh, I think, my vision of how to lead this team. And, you know, if you would have told me at the beginning of the year that even we would have played three in the back and that, that I, I, would, I would have never thought that, that, that we'd even try to employ that. But the fact that we became creative and challenged ourselves to think more carefully, I think, um, helped us find some answers and, and unlock certain things. So... Um, that's the key, I think, in life is, is, is not to, and, it, and in this business, is, is not to just define yourself in one way and, and to, to continue to think of uh, how, to, how to grow and get better. So, you know, this, and, and, and I can say for me, it, it's, it in, I've learned being here that it's so much more than just me. Like sometimes, you know, like after the New York City, when we lost 2-0 at home, man, I was so, I, I got too introspective. I got too um, on top of myself and, and, I, and I had to release a little bit and, and invest in people around me, invest in the team and the players and invest in, you know, my relationships with everyone in the organization for us all to think about how we can get better. And, and that, that gives you not only, I think, room for growth, but also a security to know that, you know, your vulnerability and not having the answer all the time is a good thing. And that the more that you can open your mind to, the, to how relationships work and how, the, how to unite people together, that the better that each one of us will be. So 
you know, sometimes I'll, I'll get into these philosophical conversations. Christian and Mark know this when they're at when they're at training some days, but that's truly what I think I have become in terms of a, a leader and a, and a and a person who does this job is somebody who tries to really look carefully at at what we do and how we do it and how to how to get better. So, um, yeah, is that the way to end? Justin Dennis, thank you. All right, thank you guys. Thank you guys.